Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, we're going to answer the question of what is a shell, or at least in computing terms. A shell at its highest level is simply the outermost layer of your operating system, the part that is interacted with by the end users. The reason it's called this is because the innermost part of the operating system is the kernel. So, of course, shell is a logical term for the outermost piece. In the real world, we know shells from all over the place, and they can be command lines, such as the classic bash on Linux, or CSH on BSD, or whatever, PowerShell, or the command prompt on Windows. Or they can be GUIs, such as the Windows GUI, the Macintosh GUI, the KDE, or the GNOME, or the Cinnamon environments for uh, Unix. All of these are shells, because the shell is simply the uh, end user's interface to the operating system itself. Doesn't matter if it's graphical or not. Now, saying that, it is technical that the GUI environment on your operating system is a shell. Most people, when using the term shell, are referring to the command line shell. So we're going to talk about that primarily. Now that we already understand that the GUIs are shells, now we're going to talk about what makes the command line work the way that it does and help explain some of the interactions that happen. Uh, the most uh, common and most well-known shell anywhere is the Born Again shell or Bash. This is the one used on Linux. It is available on basically every operating system ever made uh, or for the last 20 years, um, and it is a basically a copy of the earlier Unix shell or just SH from somewhere around 1970. It's basically the same. It's been updated and it has some advances, but it's the same fundamental shell. What these things are is pretty basic in most cases, whether you're dealing with the super advanced PowerShell on Windows, which is available for Linux, or the super basic Bash on Linux, which is available for Windows, and all of them are probably available for Mac too. I don't know if PowerShell is available for Mac, but it will be at some point for sure, because they're working hard to get it everywhere, just like Bash is universal. A lot of people assume that a lot of things are happening in shells that are not. If you're using Bash on Linux and you want to do something simple like check for uh, DNS entries, you might use the nslookup command. If you're using the CMD command prompt on Windows, you would use the same command. If you're using PowerShell, you'd use something a little bit different, generally. The thing that people get confused by is that nslookup isn't a part of any of these. The shell is only the connector to the operating system. So, NSLOOKUP is just an application that happens to be a command line application that exists on the box. Bash is simply calling NSLOOKUP. The command prompt is simply calling NSLOOKUP. If you go into PowerShell and run NSLOOKUP, it's going to call the same NSLOOKUP. If you take PowerShell and move it to Linux, it doesn't change behavior. The shell is still PowerShell and does everything identically to what it does on Windows. Or if you take Bash and move it to Windows, it does everything identically to what it does on Linux. The shell never changes because the shell is the shell. But almost nothing that we do with the shell comes from the shell itself. We use shells to call applications. That's what you do on an operating system 99% of the time. So we tend to perceive the applications that we use as being part of the shell, which is completely incorrect. And I'm not exactly sure why this happens. I don't think that most people, when using a GUI shell, such as the Windows desktop, go and acquire a third-party application, click on it, and think that it became part of the operating system or that it's inherent to the GUI because they know that they added it and they can see that it's separate. For some reason, when doing the exact same thing using a command line, a lot of people get confused and think that somehow that thing became part of the shell, even if they switch shells, say from Bash to CSH to TCSH to KSH to ZSH to Fish to PowerShell, even though all the commands remain identical and they can use them all, they still tend to feel like somehow they're built into each of those shells and that each one carries it with it. If you take Bash and move it to Windows, Bash simply calls Windows programs. You still have to use ipconfig or trace RT because those are the applications that exist on Windows. Bash calls what's there. It doesn't bring the Linux applications with it. That makes no sense at all. Likewise, if PowerShell is on Linux, it's going to call Linux applications, ifconfig, ipaddr, uh, trace root, as a, as a, they're different between the two. PowerShell will work exactly the same as it always did, 
and the commands that it calls will be the same as they always were. This is incredibly simple, yet it's very hard, apparently, to explain, as I have to explain it very often. So I, I hope that that's all it takes. I'm not sure how much more clear we can make it, uh, because we simply have to make the assumption the shell does not carry all these things with it. They're not part of the shell, ever. Not on Windows, not on Linux, not anywhere. Your shell simply calls applications. I, you need to identify the difference between things that are part of the shell, such as a loop, right? Loop and if statements, those are part of your shell because they're programming language constructs and they're simply part of that. The shell is, an oper is, a, is a programming language, a really simple one, but whether it's Bash or PowerShell, these are programming languages, always have been. They're scripting languages. They're the most simple scripting languages, but they work. And you can take other scripting languages, such as Python, uh, as long as they have a REPL, which is a repeat loop, and turn them into a shell. They would be probably not very good at it because they're not designed to do that the way that Bash are. So Bash is more efficient for being a shell. Python is more efficient for being a programming language, but they, they cross quite a bit. But programming constructs like for loops and if statements are part of the shell. And things like the redirects, the pipe, um, those types of things, those are the shell. But when we're dealing with the things that we call from the shell, the commands that we use, Command is just another word for a binary part of the collection of, of software on uh, the operating system. So it could be something that's included with the with the uh, OS, like NSLOOKUP is often just built in, although not always. Uh, but something else, like running something really complex, might be something that we have to download and add ourselves, which makes it a little, more, a little bit more apparent that it didn't come with the shell. But it's all the same. It's just calling outside applications regardless of what platform you're on, regardless of what shell environment you're using, regardless of the operating system, shells work the same way. And once we understand that they're simply calling applications on the operating system, it makes everything else make sense. So shells are super important and they're very portable and you can use pretty much any shell you like on pretty much any operating system you like, contrary to popular belief. It's just that there's really little reason to because the ones that are there natively normally do a really good job and everyone else is using them and they're included, so why change? Because shells don't bring that much with them. It's only become a cultural thing to want something like Bash on other platforms because the command prompt on Windows traditionally was so bad that people wanted more. Now that there's PowerShell, they don't tend to care very much. But I do encourage you to go get Bash and put it on Windows. Go get PowerShell and put it on Linux and spend a little bit of time because it only takes a couple minutes to realize exactly what the shell brings with it versus what's part of the operating system versus the applications that you've installed there. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like, subscribe, put your comments below, and if you want to, as always, you can sponsor us on Patreon.